I hit the glass ceiling. I got rejected five times. I think I should have been an entrepreneur a long time ago. During COVID, we did get hit pretty hard. When you have a business and you can pivot and you can move and you can be flexible and fluid, you will survive anything. And I, I think the formula is consistency. Wouldn't it have been cool to have an app or a social network to go find a golfing buddy? Thus, golfing buddy was born. So what made you want to become an entrepreneur? It, it wasn't, I never wanted to be, hello. <laughs> it was, I haphazardly became one because I hit the glass ceiling. So in media, that's very much the good of boy system. Okay. And um, I got to as high as I can get in my position. So the director of sales. So the next position would be the director of all the sales managers, right? That was the very next. And then after that would be the general manager of the TV station. So two more levels up. And when I pitched for the director of all the sales managers, I got rejected five times. That, was more, that wasn't a red flag. That was freaking fireworks. <laughs> yeah. So, and I, you know, what's funny is when I talk to a lot of businesses is I find out a lot of other entrepreneurs haphazardly become entrepreneurs because something happens in their career. Because I, I'll tell you what, I drink the Kool-Aid. I was ready to climb that ladder and I was all gun ho about it. But when I got kicked in the gut... And my loyalty was no longer, like, I, it wasn't rewarded. It was, it felt horrible. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. And so, so here's the thing, and this is where I can relate it to the military on this part, okay? When you're in the military, if you perform, you're acknowledged, you're recognized, right? You're acknowledged and you're recognized. You use your chain of command. You, you have these ethics and you're going through procedures and it's all very formal, right? It's all aligned and formal because somebody has to have somebody's back. In the real world, it doesn't happen that way. So literally the person that I was pitching the roles to to get to the next level literally was the person who's – when I went to corporate in New York, they said, you know, your manager is never going to sign off, Kat. I'm like, What? And I mean, so I did all I could do to compose myself so that I wasn't crying, you know, like a little girl. I just sat there and I took, and I'm sure I had this blank stare and I was just waiting for lunch to be over so I can get the hell out of there. And then I stayed in New York that weekend. I had already planned it, but I self-reflected. I, I thought about what am I going to do? Because... The system is not going to allow me to go to the next level, you know, unfortunately. So that's when I had to create my plan to become an entrepreneur. And that's what I did. That's awesome. <laughs> I mean, it's not awesome that you had to go through that to get to where you were, but um, it definitely makes sense. Yeah. And you know what? I don't take it as a negative. Um, some A lot of mentors and people that I tell the story to always says, you know, things happen for a reason cat and they're like do you love what you do now i'm like hell yes i think <laughs> i should have been an entrepreneur a long time ago a long 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 time ago because i have that mindset and i think military people have the entrepreneur mindset because we're go-getters right we're we're taught strategy we're taught alignment we're taught we're taught so many things you know, that really align with being an entrepreneur. And 100%. Yeah. So, you know, it works for me and I love it. And I don't have to play that political game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, you know, I know we had a chance to work a little bit. Um, well, while I was at the chamber with you and advertise and you know, I, do you still, do you have employees there? It's kind of just, you said oh, it's yeah. working on no, its no, own. No, 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 yes, yeah, yeah. So yeah. during COVID, we did get hit pretty hard um, because we had that office in, um, uh, in the third ward. 
Uh, and so we had to close that office. At that time, I think I had 15 employees and um, work from home. And we lost probably about 80% of our business because they were brick and mortar. They were small, you know, companies in Milwaukee, brick and mortar, that closed down too. And so when that happened, it was like reinvent yourself, rediscover yourself. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? So rather than just sit and wait, uh, we really promoted uh, hashtag social buzz. And that saved my ass, that literally saved my ass. I can't even be so thankful that we had created that right before the pandemic. And a lot of people were coming. And this also helped us now serve people outside everywhere outside the u.s all over the u.s so before the pandemic people would always say ah i want somebody in my neighborhood i want someone near me and i'm like why we can do just as good as a job as somebody near you but now i never hear that you know i i never hear it <laughs> yeah you know I know. I always think that's interesting because I think that was a blinder for people like, oh, I only want people in my neighborhood, you know, whereas, you know, there are way more confident companies outside your neighborhood that you should probably be considering or looking at. And that's for anything. I think a lot of businesses really blossomed during the pandemic because people were finding them and they weren't in their backyard. And that also hurt some companies that were a little more narrow-minded and didn't create a digital presence, you know? Absolutely. I talked to a business coach one time uh, as we were coming out of the pandemic and, you know, so, so many wise words. And one of them was, Kat, if they didn't survive COVID, it, they wouldn't have survived no matter if it was COVID or something else. They weren't prepared to survive anything. Like when you have a well-run machine, when you have a business and you can pivot and you can move and you can be flexible and fluid, you will survive anything. But if you're a company and you stayed solo, didn't ever think outside the box, that was your mission, you know, then those are the ones that were going to, you know, it was going to hit them harder, you know? So, yeah. You know, marketing is a, is a complicated thing. And I know like, <laughs> <laughs> you're you're kind of over <laughs> that side of the business but um you know what what are businesses really missing when it comes to to marketing their business because like i i you know some of them they network a lot they don't really yeah. have a so much of a social presence online but then there's others that have a really good presence online with no so networking presence right right and I, I think the formula is consistency, period. It's just consistency. And then I love to use examples like, let's just say in our market space, David Gruber. He's consistent, right? Yeah, he's he is. <laughs> so, he's so consistent, he's branded. And, you know, one call, that's all. That's all people say when they see him or are around him. He's branded himself so well, consistently. He, it wasn't that he had all this gazillion of dollars. He didn't have that in the beginning. He was just consistent, you know? And if somebody were to interview him and ask him, what did you do in the beginning? He said, I chose TV. I stuck with it. And then, of course, as he got bigger and bigger and bigger, he expanded. But that was his, it's just about being consistent. That's it, you know? Whatever it is that you pick, be consistent. What are, what are some of the, the challenges you've faced? You've explained it, you know, COVID earlier, but, you know, as an entrepreneur and a veteran that's looking to get into entrepreneurship, yep. you know, you've gone through challenges along the way. And what are some of those challenges that you've encountered and how did you overcome them? So I think probably some of the challenges that as an entrepreneur are, I have encountered would probably be more or less of when you're first starting out and you don't have that I have done this for a long time right because people look at you and like sometimes they ask you how long have you done this and sometimes they don't and you hope they don't right 
Um, so for an entrepreneur, and the great example in regards to this is I started the 10X Business Broker, right, a year ago. And uh, I was very lucky to have 10 clients last year. Very, very lucky. And um, this year, you know, my goal is to quadruple that. But uh, a big thing that does come up is how long have you been doing this? And I know that this happens for any entrepreneur. But the thing that you can hang your hat on is, especially if your foundation lays the groundwork, is your experience, period. And if you don't have the experience, then you, if you have the education, then you hang your hat on that. So you find the strength and hang your hat on that. Because I think that probably in itself is the biggest challenge. The other challenges, of course, people always want to talk to other clients that you work with, right? They want to know, and that's basically public reviews. So if somebody goes into an entrepreneurship, my my first and foremost recommendation would be get public reviews immediately. Get it. Do pro bono work. Get public reviews. Because the more that you can do on the beginning, you know, the onset, the more that that will help. That's, that's going to totally help you lay that groundwork and build that credibility. Because people want to know you're credible. I think that's a big Absolutely. one. Absolutely. You know? That's a great point. Yeah. That's really yeah, great. But it, I, I will say, though, it helps to be a veteran. And I think a lot of veterans don't wave that flag. No pun intended. Don't wave that flag hard enough. They don't because it does. That does help. I get a lot of people who check me out on LinkedIn or, uh, you know, before a call, or whatever. And they say, oh, Kat, I noticed that you served. And they're like, thank you so much for your service, you know. And I'm always so thankful that they recognize that, you know. But. It does build credibility. And speaking of LinkedIn, I mean, it takes a lot of guts to to put yourself out there, especially in the in the business community. And you know, even doing this, this was tough for me in the beginning to get on camera and talk and do all those things. But you've become super comfortable with it. And I'm just looking at some of the things you're doing on LinkedIn. I mean, what has that done for your for you and your business? You know, just yep. getting yourself out there. I love, and you're right, it is hard at first, because when I first did it, it was so hard, and I kept thinking when I was recording my videos at home and looking at my camera, I was like, I feel so stupid, and this feels weird, and doesn't feel right, but I tell you what, I got comfortable really quick, because the videos help, and I was talking to my team the other day, and I was, we were analyzing, you know, static content, video content, polls, so we are doing the comparative analysis and video by far by far is number one for engagement number one for views i mean is so fly it, the the what you get in return if you invest in it is way higher way higher than if you had just a static picture or a poll or you know something like that um or something you know like a quote the the video it really does and i think the thing that people like about video is they get to meet you they get to understand you they get to like you and they start to respect you especially if you have you know good content that you're pushing out you know and i love doing the videos now <laughs> Because I like teaching, I'm probably now getting way more comfortable, you know, and poking fun at things. But my content comes from my meetings. Like if someone brings something up. And a great example is I talked to a couple ladies that were getting quotes for a website. And one of the questions that came up on all three times was, Kat, why, why do I get different bids? It's the same website. I have the same content. I just need it redone, you know. And I and she gave me the example. She said one quote was three hundred, right? And one quote was five thousand. She goes, Why is there such a big difference? <laughs> and she was just being very sincere and nice. It was, you know, an older woman and she goes, you know, it's I don't need anything like like customized coding. <laughs> Right? It's a really good question. Yeah. And, and I said, well, maybe they use a gold pen when they're taking notes. I don't know. You know, and so then we dissected and I said, well, you know, here's the thing. 
if their rocket science and their uh, hourly rate is $250, then they're going to charge you blah, 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 blah. But they should outline it and justify it to you. Or if they're going to offer more stuff than just redo your website, they should line item it and tell you. If they don't line item and tell you, then they are pulling the rug under your feet. You know? Yeah. Yeah, that's a heck of a markup if they're it is. <laughs> not it including is. other other things into it. Yeah, and that's taking advantage of someone. And she said that over and over. She goes, I don't like to be taken advantage of. I feel like that was an opportunity for someone to take advantage of me. And someone did because they pitched her 5000 where the other one was 300 you know? Yeah. How do you think how do you think people can get better at it you know better at doing videos and and just getting themselves out there is it practicing behind a mirror or you okay Brian we just talked about this pre-show <laughs> just like golf right <laughs> you got to keep doing it you got to keep doing it and you know here's how I got uh, adjusted to it very quickly is I started them during COVID because I wasn't out, out and about networking, right? I started them and I was doing them every day, a marketing minute every day, you know? So I did it for a year and a half until I got burnt out, okay? <laughs> uh, and that was my last video. Uh, <laughs> but I did do it for a year and a half every day, you know? That's a lot of content. And then when I got to the point where I burned out, I, I pulled back and I said, I need to take a break it's okay. I'm going to take a break. And I did take a break for like three months. I didn't push out any content. And then I got back on the saddle and I said, okay, now I'm not going to push myself to always do five a week. I'm going to strive for three, you know? And so you make it so that it's palatable, right? But you don't do it so that you push yourself so hard, you're going to hate it. Okay. Um, but you do it because you do, you do, you do want to teach someone something you, you know, I think the best videos that I watch all the time are when I learn something from somebody who gave me a nugget, you know, you don't have to give me the whole package. If you just give me a little nugget, I love that. And I watch a lot of people's videos. Um, there's a veteran that I watch on Facebook and he pushes out some really good content and it's very intriguing to me because it's about taxes, it's about loans, it's about growing your business. And one of them, I was so intrigued by it. I said, Hey, I want you on my podcast. I like this, but you know what Absolutely. I mean? So yeah. if I can react like that to someone, imagine someone reacting to you, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. It's, it's, that's such a really good point because I see myself doing that a lot too. When I watch videos, it's, you might even, I mean, you could watch an hour video and you only get, there's like a 10 minute or yeah. 10 second thing that you're like, Oh my gosh, why didn't I think of something like that? Or it's like reading a book. Yep. Like I've read a lot of books and <laughs> you know, I don't read the whole book to get all of the education in it, but there's like one or two things that you're like, wow, I wish I would have known that sooner in my life. Right. And then you mark that page and you mark that chapter. That's what I do. And in audiobooks, you can mark it digitally. <laughs> I'm an audiobook girl, so. <laughs> yeah. What are you listening to? Uh, so interesting. Uh, this is my third time. Uh, and I'll say listening because the first time I read it, okay, the second time I heard it, and the third time I heard it. So thank you, Grow Rich. Um, so this is my third time. Um, and so I'm almost done with it. Uh, but Del Carnegie, I'm, I'm a big fan, you know, I'm a huge fan. Uh, and then I have a few more books lined up after that. Um, I can't even think which author it will be next. Um, I'm, I'm addicted to audiobooks. I love them. I, uh, I just got strategy. Uh, what is it? Strategies of war by Robert Greene. Okay. I just got back from Florida and I, on the plane ride back, I just downloaded it. So I've only gotten through a couple couple chapters but it it already sounds great yeah oh yeah yeah that's awesome and that's the thing about books is the more that it can you know take you in and grip you the better i love a good book where you don't want to put it down you know but those are my favorite what uh so you mentioned it already golf mm -hmm. buddy um tell us how it got started and you know where it's at today okay 
So I have to profess, yes, my name is Kat. I'm a serial entrepreneur. <laughs> uh, I need to go to <laughs> the entrepreneur addiction. <laughs> Um, so golfing buddy is one of my passion projects and, uh, I really like, I really love working on it. Um, I have to pick and choose my time and days to work on it, of course, but I absolutely love it. It started because, uh, Jeff, my partner, one weekend, uh, he started golfing late, by the way, I have always been golfing. Always, 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 since I've been in TV world, right? TV land, it's, it was part of the job. You go to golfing outings, right? You schmooze, you go and do all that stuff. And I loved it. It was great. And I took lessons and I joined leagues and, you know, I love golf uh, as an outlet. And Jeff, when I met him, uh, he was in his 40s when he said, I want to learn too. I, I want to play with you. So I, we got him some clubs, he took some lessons, we started golfing together, and it's a great thing that we do together, which I love. And he now plays way better than I do, and, <laughs> uh, and watches the golf and training and all that. So one weekend, we uh, it was beautiful, really pretty here. And as Wisconsin is, you gotta take advantage of those weathers, right? The beautiful days. And that weekend I couldn't, I had a project, I had to get it done, and I just couldn't. I couldn't break away. I Mentally, I, I said no, because then it would drive me nuts. And I said, you got to find a buddy, I just can't do it. I'm sure you can find someone. You know, it's golf. Somebody will golf with you. He couldn't, he couldn't, and he's not one to golf by himself. He will not golf by himself. And so after that weekend, because he was moping around and he was really just down, and I said, wouldn't it have been cool to have an app or a social network to go find a golfing buddy? And then that way you have someone to golf with. And thus, Golfing Buddy was born. And so I immediately took the steps to, like, launch it and um, get it out there. So trademark the name, you know, made the LLC started creating the we – start, we started with the web app because it's a way more affordable – way more affordable than an app app. So we created the web app. We launched it. I want to say it was uh, in mid 2020 sometime. Uh, we didn't do anything to promote it because we were doing COVID. And so toward the end of 2021, I said, I'm putting money on this. I'm starting to focus on it. And so I started to put a team member on it. We started to invite people to join it, and so we are we are here today. We have just under, or maybe we're over now, two thousand organic members. Wow! Yay, who signed up themselves? Um, and you know, it's funny because when I talk to a golf course, they're like, "Oh, real golfers aren't going to sign up for that." And I'm so I pull out the analytics and the statistics. I'm like, "Wow, that's." strange because my average golfer is a male that is from you know 30 to 60 years old <laughs> <laughs> and that's uh, the prime time yeah and and so i'm like it was created of course for females so they they can find other females to golf with because you can go in there and find someone that likes wine or they like to walk nine holes or they like to stop at the, the ninth hole and have a drink or, you know, so you can pick little things, variations on personality traits, not on a score. You can pick a score if you want, you know, but it was really focused on I want to find people just like me that I want to golf with. So I don't feel bad. I don't feel intimidated. And, you know, I don't feel insulted. And um, so that was the whole premise of it. Women, minorities, uh, parents with juniors, veterans, adaptive golfers. Uh, and I learned the word adaptive because I didn't know that that's what disabled people are called now, you know. And so I'm, I'm learning as I go. And there are a lot of uh, adaptive golfers, believe it or not. And it's very cool on how they play golf. And uh, so just meeting these different types of organizations and groups of people 
you know, there's still the whole stigma of, oh, I don't want to play at that golf course because they're going to pair me. I don't know who they're going to pair me with. And it's frightening. It creates so much stress and anxiety for people. I don't think golf courses realize that. It only takes one bad experience. That's it. One. I will never go back. <laughs> and it's not even the golf course's fault. It's that they're pairing people with no rhyme or reason, you know? Cause they no, I agree with that. Cause it's hard to, it's hard to relax and you need to right. relax when you're golfing. Yeah. And that's the whole point of golfing, right? Cause you're outdoors. It's refreshing. You know, you want to be able to have your conversation and just take it in and breathe. But if you're with someone that you're paired with in this, I have to share the story cause it actually happened to me. And, you know, and I've been playing golf longer than, you know, Jeff. And we were paired when we went to the golf course and, um, and just any regular golf course, you know, and the two guys that we were paired with were just brutal. They're brutal. Um, they didn't talk to me. They didn't acknowledge me. They would high five Jeff and say, Oh, great shot. And blah, blah, blah. And I was just invisible. I was just there. Like I probably could have stripped down naked and ran around the golf course and they would have never saw me, you know? But I wasn't there. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so this is all on an app. So people can, is it, so, or do they have to go to a website to? No, they can do an app or the website. We're on Google Store. So we're on the Google Store, Golfing Buddy. And uh, it's a web app, so it can be downloaded to an uh, Apple uh, phone. Uh, it just takes someone to follow I have instructions, but it takes someone to follow the instructions. If anybody knows what web apps are, you know, and so they're, they're a lot more fluid and, uh, way less expensive. Yeah. So you have, it's kind of like a, almost like a dating app so they can click the criteria that they are, Yep. you know, they're, they're a veteran or they're a veteran and a female. So they check the boxes. And then it has the location of where they're, they're located. They're geofenced. To. Yes, it is okay. geofenced. Yeah. And then um, they can pick and choose. They can say, I want to play, find other women like me or other men, or they can say both. Doesn't matter. Yep. And is there, is there any sort of membership cost to this? Nope. Or is free. it free. It's all free. free. No kidding. Free. free. Cause you know, it's like any other social network. I have to fill the house. You know, and I just want to make it affordable. I want people to use it. I want people to get me feedback. Um, and so, you know, our big thing right now is just trying to get an investor so that it won't be free, that we can get sponsors and other things. But, you know, at the end of the day, you have to, it, it's the chicken or the egg, right? Chicken yep. or the egg. You got to have, you know, chickens to lay eggs. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can't just have eggs without chickens. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So, so out of the two thousand, you said you had two thousand members already. Mm -hmm. And how many are? Where are they all located? Are they everywhere. just in Wisconsin? Everywhere. Everywhere. So we focus like we do targeted ads. We focus in the hot, hot states because they play golf more often, right? Florida, Los Angeles, Phoenix. Texas, you know, so any place that's hot year round. Um, but because um, a lot of people are just finding it, you know, they're just signing up uh, like all over. Uh, no, that's awesome. So um, I'm going to put the links to all that stuff in, in the description below. But what's the what's the best way for someone to get in touch with Kat? Maybe they have questions about your business. Yep. Is it to connect with you on LinkedIn and go oh, from yeah. there. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm probably more visible on LinkedIn. If people are a natural Facebook, I'm there. Reach out to me. I mean, you can't miss me. It's Catherine Cat Ramirez. There's not that many Catherine Cat Ramirez. Um, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of Catherine Ramirez, but I always make sure I put my middle cat you know in the middle hey guys if you enjoyed this one check out these videos right over here and we'll see you in the next video